by a heavenly presence, we can just read for ourselves what the vision meant. Basically, it was this. Kingdoms come and kingdoms go, but God's kingdom, which, by the way, was brought in more fully with the incarnation of Christ, though still not yet here completely, God's kingdom will never end. God's kingdom is eternal. And for all the strange language of the vision, the animals and the horns and the fire and the destruction, these apocalyptic images are not supposed to instill fear, which they seem to do. We read them and we're like, what the heck is going on? They're actually written, though, to give you hope. The people here are in exile. One king after another is rising up, and God's people are continually oppressed. But the message is, you are God's people. God's kingdom is eternal. These earthly kingdoms keep failing and falling. God is with you in the suffering. Hold on. Don't lose hope. And it seems that Daniel and the Israelites do hold on. They do not lose hope. Demonstrated over and over again, they demonstrated that they did believe that God was in control. And they had reason to hope even though they may lose their lives. So they didn't just give up. They did all they could do to stand firm and not lose hope. They practiced spiritual disciplines that would help them stay connected to their God help their relationship with God grow. So even in exile, they prayed, they ate their kosher food, they fasted, they worshiped the God of Israel, they refused to worship any king or any statue the king may make, and they continued these spiritual disciplines, as I said, at the risk of losing their own lives for doing so. It's why Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were thrown into the fiery furnace. It's why Daniel was thrown into the lion's den. And if you noticed, they did not put God to the test by praying a foxhole prayer. God, if you get me out of this mess, I promise I will serve and worship you. They were already serving and worshiping God. Their relationship was secure. They trusted. They walked by faith and not by sight. To such an extent that they could say, even if God doesn't save me from this, I will worship only God. a pretty huge statement in a polytheistic pagan world. It's really much the same today, don't you think? The spiritual disciplines we practice help us to grow closer to God and help us to stand firm in our chaotic world. When the world or our friends or the political divisions or whomever try to lead us astray. And as we head full steam ahead into the election season, maybe it's time for us to return to our foundation, to our disciplines, so that we are growing in our relationship with God and will be able to stand firm in the midst of the chaos which, as I have mentioned before, is part of the reason for the book study this fall. 
celebration of discipline. And there's still time to join. <laughs> you do want to start your assignment this week, Little Rabbit Trail, start your, start your reading. And there's scripture reading every day. You know, we can get on automatic pilot. We can get comfortable where we are. I'm going to move. Um, maybe we are doing good. We're in that relationship with God. We're in God's word. We're worshiping. We're in small groups talking about things. And then we're not. I'm not reading my Bible this week. I've got too much to do. I'm not going to come to Sunday school or Bible study. We might think we've just we're staying in the same place. You're not staying in the same place. You're either moving toward God and growing closer in your relationship with God and one another, or you're moving in the wrong direction. It's good to check in and think about, where am I in my relationship with God? So in our study, we'll learn more about prayer and study service and worship, confession and celebration, just to name a few of the disciplines we will look at. And each discipline is a way we grow closer to God. We open our spirit to allow God's spirit to speak to our hearts you know, I've shared with you before how it was so, and so easy, but it was easier for me to pray, create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. When I know I'm not in a good place, when I know I've strayed, create in me a clean heart, O oh God. It's harder to pray Search me, O oh God, and know my heart and see if there is any way that is not of you. That's a bad paraphrase of Psalm 139. But search my heart and know it. Opening our lives and spirit to God's spirit so we can hear God more clearly, more than the world and more than the chaos and more than the voices that would lead us astray. Allowing God's spirit to commune with ours, just as God did with Daniel and the Israelites. <clears throat> now dreams are not a spiritual discipline. We can't go to bed and say to ourselves, self, I want to dream tonight to connect to God. Maybe you can. God works in mysterious ways. But dreams are still used by God to speak to us. Think about it. God has a captive audience when we're dreaming. All those other things that usually distract us, they can't. Throughout the Bible, God has spoken to God's people in dreams to correct a wayward child that's gone going the wrong way, to announce what's coming next, to encourage, hold on, don't lose faith. From Genesis, when Abraham lies and gives his wife Sarah to King Abimelech, and Abimelech has this dream, and God says, you are as good as dead because of the woman you have taken. She is a married woman. And thankfully, because of that dream, Abimelech doesn't do anything with Sarah. 
and she's returned back to Abraham. Later in Genesis, Joseph is able to interpret dreams to the Egypt, to the Pharaoh in Egypt. And this gives Joseph a place of leadership and authority. In Numbers, God says, listen to my words. When there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, reveal myself to them in visions. I speak to them in dreams. Then in the book of Joel, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. And then that's quoted in the New Testament book of Acts on the day of Pentecost when God's spirit is given to everyone. And then Peter has that weird dream about the sheep, the sheet coming down from heaven and all the different foods on it. And he's told, there's not unclean and clean, it's all clean. And Peter wakes up and thinks about it and realizes God was talking to him, but not about food, about people. No people are unclean, all people are God's people, Jew and Gentile alike. Think about Elizabeth and Zechariah and Mary and Joseph. How many times did God speak to them in dreams? Joseph, take Mary and the child and go and flee to Egypt. I believe God still speaks to us in dreams. But we have to be willing to be attentive and consider that it might be so. Instead of dismissing it, that was just a dream. I have had dreams, one in particular, that I remember vividly. Actually, it woke me up three nights in a row. And it was part of God leading me into the ministry. I didn't know it at the time. But it was. And I've had nights where I went to bed fully decided on a situation. I had my answer to the question or knew what I was going to do, only to wake up and just know deep in my gut that that was not the answer or the way to go. In those instances where I don't remember a particular dream, but somehow through the night, God's Spirit spoke to mine and changed the direction I was heading. Like years ago when Kevin was offered a new position with his company that involved a move to Belgium. He was out of town when he got that news. So he called me to tell me about it. And the real problem was we only had till the next day to make that decision. So I got off the phone with Kevin and I learned all that I could about Belgium and a dial-up internet and a big chunky green-hued computer. And then we spoke later that night. Talking through all we could with the limited information that we had. And we believed we should do it. And we went to bed. And the next morning we woke up I don't remember a specific dream or anything, just in my gut, I knew, mm, no, we're not supposed to be going to Belgium. We should not go. And I needed to call Kevin as quickly as possible so he didn't tell his boss yes, because the night before the answer was yes. So I called him up, guess what? He had had the exact same experience. He didn't think we should go either. Whether a dream or a spiritual discipline or a song, 
or something in nature or a person or whatever God may use. God is still speaking. May we be more like Daniel and expect God to speak. May we live more like Daniel and practice the spiritual disciplines that will help us be more in tune with God's spirit. We just might need that this election season. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Amen. As we come to this time of prayer, I have a few updates to share with you. I received a text Friday from Barb Owens that Barry was home from the hospital, but that sadly Barry's sister had passed away. So please continue to pray both for Barry's health, he has some more upcoming tests because they still don't know what's going on, um, and also as they mourn the loss of Barry's sister. Nancy will continue in Cedar Hills until she is able to go home. So they are very happy with the care that she is receiving there. And she is so thankful for your visit. Y'all are doing an awesome job and I encourage you to keep that up. And with Lethea too, she wanted me to thank you for your visits, for your cards, for flowers, little goodies. I, I believe someone's known to bring a milkshake to her when they come. So thank you all for doing such an awesome job of caring for one another. Are there other concerns to share? Let us pray. Daniel dreamt of terrible earthly kingdoms and concluded that only your kingdom, O oh God, endures forever. Help us to trust in the promise of your eternal reign of justice and peace. Your creation, God, is breathtaking from the smallest particle to the largest galaxy, from microscopic pond life to elephants and blue whales, from duckweed to bobab trees, and still in us such awe and respect for all that you have made that we cannot help but work for its healing and preservation. Make our leaders turn away from the kind of destructive power characterized in Daniel's dream and lead them on the path towards systems that uphold and protect all people. You have raised up among us countless practitioners of health in multiple fields. Guide them toward providing the best of care to all who suffer, that all might experience health and wholeness. Especially, O oh God, we lift up those we name in our hearts at this time. May they feel your presence in a powerful way, knowing you are with them, knowing we are here for them. Inspire artists, musicians, writers, and other creatives through dreams like Daniel's or observations of life that they might enrich our experience with expressions of joyful gratitude and provocative challenge. We remember with gratitude all whose lives of faith were challenged by adversity and who emerged ever more committed to you. 
by their wise guidance, help us to navigate our difficulties with our faith intact. Confident in your life-giving love, we lift these prayers and all those in our hearts into your loving care. Praying as Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us stand as we sing together. joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 